my name is Romy. This is my baby, Casta. And it's time for my sixth book review in my 2019-10 series where I pick 10 books that are truly beloved to me and reread them this year and review them all. And it's time for Pride and Prejudice. And I am devastated. So, look at this gorgeous edition of Pride and Prejudice. I bought this as a Christmas present to myself two years ago, I think, um, because I just didn't have a nice copy of Pride and Prejudice. There's a few copies around about. One of my most prized is an amazing um, edition featuring Colin Firth and Jennifer Ethel from the BBC adaption, and it's so, like, 90s glorious. I love it. But I bought myself this one. It's illustrated, it's got this bright orange spine. It's, half of it's got quite faded from sitting on my bookshelf, but it kind of just adds to the beauty of it. Pride and Prejudice, I know. I've read it before, I think I've only read it once, but I'm a big lover of Austen's work, and I know the story, and I love the story. I have invested many hours into Pride and Prejudice adaptions, um, and spin-offs and I was confident stepping into this little book that I would love it and yet we'll start with the fact that my devastation was too much because I was finishing the book um, I had about a chapter to go and I was just reading through and then I turned the next page and it was finished and I had read the last sentence and knowing the story I should have remembered maybe maybe it's my fault I should have remembered possibly that that was the last we'll put you down that that was the last sentence in the book but I haven't read this in years and I turned the page, so enjoying myself, looking forward to a few more pages of talks about what happens at the end. And it was finished. And I was so put out. It really cut me because this book is glorious and it's just, it makes me so happy and it's just phenomenal and I love it so much. And it let me down at the end because I was ready to enjoy myself for a good three or four pages more. But no, they were all just the blank end pages. Mm. So, Pride and Prejudice is a story about a blue staffy. <laughs> My name is Elizabeth Bennett. The story of Pride and Prejudice is about a blue staffy called Elizabeth Bennet. It's a fairly well-known story. This puppy called Elizabeth Bennet has a family who is frustrating, loving at times, very, very focused on getting themselves married. <laughs> and one day she meets a man and he doesn't really like her and she doesn't really like him. And then they end up not liking each other too much. And then everything's all right because Elizabeth Bennet is Kathy! <laughs> so, the actual story is pretty well known. Um, and I was quite interested to see what I felt because when I first read it, say four or five years ago, I despised Darcy with a fire and passion um, and I I knew the story I knew I loved him in the adaptions I had seen but the, the book Darcy was just something else he was abhorrent and I could understand completely why Lizzie didn't like him and then I fell head over heels in love with him so I was quite interested to see how I felt about him this time I saw him in a very very different light this time and I pretty much loved him from the start. I enjoy this book so much. It has reasserted itself as one of my all-time favourite books. It has to be my favourite 
Austin, although I do love Northanger Abbey. It's got such a wide variety of characters. You've got Mr. Collins, who is like the best worst character. You've got Wickham, who is so endearing and so well written. You've got Lydia, who is nauseating. Um, I'm not a fan of Lydia, but I love Lydia in the Lizzie Bennet Diaries. I think that portrayed her so well, and that adaption gave her a really unique, positive character arc that um, definitely opens my eyes to the way that in other adaptions Lydia is perceived. Lydia is a character who could be given a certain story, I guess, but she's not. And there's definitely, with certain things that happen with certain characters, say, Charlotte and Mr. Collins, Lydia and Wickham, there's characters who do something that goes against the grain or goes against the main character's wishes and there's quite a bit of judgment and that's not a positive thing but I guess it is also true to Lizzie's nature. Um, like there's not an awful lot of let's give someone a chance or in Charlotte's case let's try and understand why this has happened it's more Lizzie's got her prejudice and her pride and I guess that's just true to the story but there's definitely elements that are dated I mean this is a book from whenever it was first published hundreds of years ago and there's definitely those elements. I also wish Mary got more of a fulfilled character. Mary and Kitty really aren't given much page time. Um, Mary, I did not <laughs> remember her being quite the way she is. She's very, um, she's very verbally moral and puts her thoughts of morality on everyone else. But then like you kind of, hear her change a little bit at the end so it would have been really interesting to have that happen a bit earlier and to actually see a change or a growth in her and find out why exactly she's the way she is it would be it would also be interesting to see kitty grow a bit more because we really don't see her as anything other than a sidekick going into pride prejudice you pretty much know what it's about it's about this mother of five daughters who instead of seeing their pros and cons and loving them as her children she kind of just wants to have them all married that is pretty much her goal in life in this particular edition it is as i said illustrated by alice petullo and the illustrations really added to the story they felt to me very inspired by the um 90s bbc adaption and i had recently watched that as well so that was very much in my mind that's also a very very true adaption to the book i wasn't a fan of all of the illustrations or all of the styles or representations of characters say but i felt like it gave the book a really unique feel and i just treasure this edition i think it's so nice to have such a beautiful book illustrated and the scenes of gardens and um, the houses and nature were just beautiful and I love that. We're going to look up this series, Classics Reimagined, um, and see what other books I can get illustrated because I've always loved illustrated books and I'm looking forward to the potential of having many more in my collection. Another amazing thing about this edition is that if you can see here, there's a little separation in just after the halfway mark and it's a fold out design illustration of Pemberley and it's oh so beautiful also if you notice a change in the camera quality the fact that I'm no longer illuminated by some kind of strange looking halo it's because my camera was fogging up so I had to leave it for about five minutes to defog in the sun and now we're back Overall, Pride and Prejudice was absolute joy. It's got so many little quotes throughout that I already know and love and 
have seen on pins and have on pins, I think. Why have any Pride and Prejudice pins? I don't know. But I was like, oh, it's from that. Oh, this thing on my journal's from this. Ah, oh, like I knew they were from Pride and Prejudice, but seeing them in print was really special. Just a book that I love so much and it just completely blew me away with how much I still love it. It's not as dated as you might think it would be for a book that is so old. It's such an easy read and it, like sometimes classics can seem so daunting, like they're these so well-known books and they're supposed to be good, but heavy classic reading. And this is not like that at all. This is just a whirlwind of joy and pride and prejudice. Now, the three things I always mention at the end of my book reviews, diversity, queer characters, and female representation. Pride and Prejudice is led by a cast of female characters. There's Lizzie, who we know a lot about or a lot about of through the story. Her sister Jane, Lydia, Kitty, Mary, <laughs> Mrs. Bennett, um, Mrs. Gardner, Liddy's Liddy, oh my goodness, Lizzie's aunt, who we learn quite a bit of, Georgiana, Darcy, um, Charlotte, and then Mariah, or Maria, and there's more. The cast is predominantly female, it's led by a female character, it's written by a female author. As for diversity, an interesting fact about this is that I did not once or I do not want to recall reading about a character's skin tone in this book. Character's ethnicity is not once specified um, and their skin tone isn't talked about. And queer representation. There are no queer characters mentioned. I hope in modern adaptions that becomes a thing. Actually Lost in Austin has a queer character in it so maybe watch that. I enjoy that one quite a bit. And that's my review of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I pretty much finished this and was ready to reread. Seriously, I could have just started it all over again. There was so much joy, but the disappointment in that last page. Oh my gosh, you failed me.